How's my favorite society matron tonight? Don't ever make me sound like a blue-haired old lady. <laughs> well, how are you doing on that prize fellowship for young Dr. Price? I've only got one more board member to convince. Just gotta find the right time. Is it a hard sell? Well, I'm not exactly her favorite person. It's Renee over there. What'd you ever do to her? Not a thing, except marry her ex-husband. <laughs> well, she looks much more his speed. You are too fast for that old man. Asa keeps up with me just fine. But when he starts falling behind, you let me know. You just never give up, do you? Look, I promised you I would do you a favor, and I'm going to keep that promise, because you never know when I might need a favor in return. It's that simple. Now, I'm going to get Ben Price that fellowship. I just have to figure out a way to convince Renee. Ben, Renee, I know that you're both worried about me, but really, I feel perfectly fine. I told you we might have a fight on our hands. Don't get me wrong, Vicky. I'm glad you're feeling fine. But I also think you owe it to yourself to find out what caused the blackout. I agree. Well, so do I, and I will do it. Uh, I'll call and make an appointment tomorrow. Vicky! You see, what worries me is that now you feel the need to wear glasses all the time. <laughs> A sudden shift in vision often indicates something's very wrong. Or it could be all those years in the newspaper business finally taking their toll on me. Oh, come on, Vicky. This has to do with the car accident. No, well, Larry checked me out the next morning, didn't he? And he found absolutely nothing wrong. Well, maybe nothing was showing up yet. And you had sudden memory loss of the accident? What happened afterwards? It all came back to me. Why don't we just run some tests to rule out the possibility of anything serious? Well, that's fine, but why now? Okay, I'll be blunt with you. I'm a neurosurgeon, and the symptoms you're presenting make me nervous. Oh, my God. I mean, let's not panic. It, it, it could turn out to be nothing. But I say let's check it out tonight, now. No, I, I really don't need it. Vicki, we are talking about your health. Why are you fighting us on this? Is there something more involved, something you're not telling us? Get out, Tina! No, Blair, I'm just getting started with you. Oh, fine. You want me to throw you out? My pleasure. <laughs> Get your hands off of me. What, your new husband is giving you lessons in brute force? You say one more word about Todd. So help me, you'll be sorry. Not half as sorry as Cord is forever getting mixed up with you. You know what your problem is, Tina? You just can't stand the fact that someone else comes first in Cord's life other than you. Well, guess what? He was all over me. A few years ago, back in Java, when you two were still married. I've always known you were slutting after him back then. But don't blame me. You came in second, as always. Yeah, sure. Because he was, couldn't get away from you. Because you pulled your phony damsel in distress and then had to beg him to save you out another one of the things that you messed your life up with. Jealousy. Yep, it's jealousy. Because Cord preferred his family to you. Oh, is that why you lied? to me and told me the two of you had gotten back together for your family's sake? you damn right I lied. I had to do something before you did any more damage. Well, if someone ruined Cord's life, it's you, Tina. At least I have never gotten back at him by marrying someone else out of spite. You have no idea why I married Todd. Oh, no? Fill me in, Blair. Why would you marry Todd? If it wasn't to hurt Corbin. Do you have a thing for rapists or something? You just shut up! You little tramp, or I'll shut your mouth for you. I don't believe this. Yes, Tina. Together soon. You and me. CJ and Sarah. Get up, Vickers. Get up, you piece of garbage. I said get up!
Party's over, Vickers. Nice try. But you're not getting away this time. Just get off me, Cord. So how long has she been hiding you here, huh? Who? Tina? Tina doesn't even know that I'm here. <laughs> right. You've been lying up one way and down another ever since you came to Landview. Now, Tina may be gullible enough to buy your line of bull, but I sure as hell... Don't. I am telling you the truth. She doesn't know anything. <sighs> My God. To think that she almost had me convinced that she was out of your life for good. She was. I mean, she is. That... That is why I had to come back here. I had to set things straight with her. All right, and she bought it hook, line, and sinker. You know, I don't know why it is that she can't resist low-life con men like yourself any more than you guys can resist taking advantage of her. I wasn't. Well, she did That's fine. I don't care anymore. She can do whatever she pleases. She is a grown woman, but I will be damned if I'm going to allow her stupidity to put my kids in danger ever again. I never once did anything to hurt CJ or Sarah. What do you call passing yourself off as Uncle David for months on end? What do you call convincing their mother to take them out of school and drag them halfway around the world to be with you in Spain? Well, for that, you're gonna pay. What? What? Who are you calling? Who do you think? Bo, hey, how you doing? It's Cord. Listen, you better get a squad car over to Landfair right away. You're not gonna believe who's standing right in front of me. I got David Vickers, dead to rights. A little touchy about your jailbird husband. You are one to talk. You probably spent more time behind bars than Todd has, you hypocrite. I'd rather be a hypocrite than a whore. Hey, what's going on here? Oh, well... What are you doing here? Little Miss Tina thought she would stop by and congratulate us on our marriage. Funny way of showing it. What? I can't believe that you two are married. Why, what's it to you? Couldn't you have hurt Cord just as much by sleeping with Todd? Did you have to marry the guy? Shut up, Tina. Oh, what's the matter, Blair? You afraid Todd's gonna find out you had an ulterior motive? Because you always do. Watch it, Tina. Not that you two don't deserve each other. Get out, Tina. But I am curious about one thing. Well, what kind of life do you two expect to have? Do you even have a job? You know, your silly little pipe dream business, that's never gonna see the light of day now that Cord is out of the Get picture. out! Tina, and what I do with my life is none of your business. Just like Todd's is none of David Vickers. Would you get out of here, Tina, before I throw you out? You know, I almost feel sorry for you, Todd. Not even you deserve being stuck with this witch. I can't believe that's my brother. He didn't have a clue. Neither of them acted like they knew anything about the inheritance. Would you please let Ben examine you right away? Just, uh, just to be on the safe side? If I find nothing, then at least you have peace of mind. Okay, fine. I'll go. For your sake. And yours. Here's a chance to get to Renee about that fellowship for Ben. Look, I appreciate it, Alex. It'll mean a lot to my niece, Rachel. Wish me luck. Luck? I'll make a call into the hospital from the car and have him prep an exam room for you. Vicky, Vicky, what's this about a hospital? Oh, right? fine. I've been having some headaches. Ben and Renee are being overprotective. Well, I would trust Ben. He's an excellent doctor. Thank you. Yeah, I don't believe we've met. Alexandra Buchanan. I think we should be going. Uh, forgive us, Alex. Asa. You take care of yourself. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Renee, what are you doing? I need to talk to you very quickly, just for a minute. Uh, darling, Ben Price and Vicky are waiting it's for about me. Ben Price. <sighs> Another time, all right? Oh, hey. Since when did you get all fired up about Ben Price? I'll have to explain it to you later, sweetheart. Hey, no, no, where are you going? Well, I, I have to go to the hospital. I have to talk to Renee. Alex, honey. We just pulled the greatest coup. We got Liz McNamara to make you cultural liaison, and I feel good. I sent a plane load of medical and food supplies to Kobe, and I pulled a sweet deal in the Tokyo Stock Exchange. Come on, let's celebrate. All right, darling, we will celebrate in the shower when I get back from the hospital.
Excuse me, have you seen Miss Renee Devine Buchanan? Right over there. Oh, thank you so much. Oh, finally, I have just been all over this hospital looking for you. What on earth are you doing here? I told you I need to speak to you about Ben Price. And it has to be tonight? Well, the deadline for the decision on the London Research Fellowship recipient is tomorrow, remember? And what has that got to do with you? Oh, that's right, you don't know. Well, I've recently been appointed to the hospital board. What? And as a new member of the board, I just felt that it was my responsibility to... What in God's name did you do to finagle this? Oh, I felt it was my duty to accept their offer. Being Mrs. Asa Buchanan is just such a... It imposes such a great responsibility in this town, as I'm sure you remember. And I've always felt that with power should come service. And what did it cost Asa for this? Oh, well, that's not a very nice thing to say, but I'm willing to overlook that because of our shared commitment to both the hospital and Dr. Ben Price. Spit it out, Alex. Well, of all the candidates on the list, I feel, in my opinion, that Dr. Ben Price is the most deserving. Forgive me if I question the basis of your opinion. I'm not alone. I've spoken to the other board members and they feel the same way. Is that right? Yes. So, how do you feel? I mean, do you agree with the rest of us? Well, I might tell you if you'll tell me. What are you up to, Alex? Oh. Too bright? Uh, I'm sorry. I was thinking about something else. You startled me. Next time, why don't you just blind me? Okay, look to your left, please. Blasted Renee, dragging him into this. Now look right, please. He's hardly old enough to play doctor, let alone be one. That's all I need for Renee to start babbling about how Victoria is scared that that idiot Nicky Smith is back. In tenderness? Uh, no, no. Not in those hands. Doesn't appear to be any surface evidence of injury. No. Almost finished. I would be home now if I hadn't wasted my time talking to Todd Manning. Victoria's brother. Victor certainly spawned a winner there. That degenerate related to poor Victoria. She shouldn't have to endure that. Let alone allow him to inherit millions of dollars. <clears throat> Vicky, has uh, anything happened tonight that might have caused you any anxiety? No, no, I don't think so, no. Except perhaps being forced to endure your endless poking and prodding. Well, your blood pressure is slightly elevated. I'd like you to keep an eye on it. Oh, of course. As if I don't have enough to do keeping an eye on Victor's greedy offspring. I need to sort this out. Meanwhile, I have to make sure that neither Todd nor Tina get the money. I'm wondering if that's why Blair Daimler married the boy. Everyone knows what a gold digger she is. Well, she's got to be very disappointed when I... Vicky. Vicky. I'm sorry, did you say something? Yeah, I uh, guess I caught you thinking about something else again. Oh, oh yes, it's a whole series of articles that I'm doing for the banner. Just a few more quick tests. We're almost finished. All right. All right, let's take a look at this EEG printout. Victoria will never be free as long as Victor's bastard children are found in the earth. I've got to find a way to get rid of them. Vicky, are you sure you're okay? Oh, yes, yeah, fine. Thank you. Thank you. Tina, she's got a lot of nerve coming over here, chewing me out for breaking cords. Hard. Here you go. You push your buttons, huh? You know, and why is she so revved up about how we're going to make it anyway? Beats me. You know what I think? I think that she's snooping around for David Vickers. Is what I think. What do you mean about me? Mm -hmm. I think the two of them are working together. Except I heard that David Vickers left the country because he pulled some scam on the Almighty Lords. Well, I heard something different. I heard that she and David are married. Really? Was that before or after she knew that he wasn't a brother? I guess that was part of their scam. I guess he wasn't the Lord heir after all. So what do they want from me? I don't think they want anything from you. 
I think that they know something about you, and they're afraid that you're going to figure out what it is. Well, it must be good. Vicar's playing nice with me. Good or bad, Todd? Aren't you dying to find out what it is? I guess it couldn't hurt. I mean, maybe there is money. Maybe that would help me make some sense out of my life. Might do something for the kid. Yeah. All right, I'll give Sam Vance a call. <clears throat> I mean, she said that she could find out if I wanted her to. You know, Todd, I, I think that that is a good idea. Because one way or the other, we'll get um, Tina and David off your back. I can't believe you thought you could come back here and not get caught. Well, Landview Blue hasn't failed me yet. That's about to change, because you're going to jail. So why'd you take the risk? I told you. I had to see Tina. Oh. I guess you forgot all about your little rendezvous in Madrid, huh? You thought I ran off with Dorian Lord. And you didn't. So I suppose you had to come back here and you had to explain all that to her, right? Man, you must really want that money bad. This isn't about money, Cord. Oh, come on, Vickers. It's always about money where you're concerned. I love Tina. Uh, we're gonna have a future together. Oh, a future? What future is that? A future on the run with my kids? Oh, or a future behind bars and adjoining cells? Man, you got a funny way of treating a woman that, that you supposedly claim I to love. I do love her. Just... Yeah. You love her enough to get her involved in your crime. You know, hiding you here in her room is gonna look great court, on a police court. Court! How many times do I have to tell you Tina doesn't know about any of this? What can you tell me about this guy, Jacob Johnson? So many questions. What are you doing with articles on Angie and Charles? What is he doing here? One man holds the answers. Of course I know I look just like Jesse Hubbard. Why else would I be here? All the drama and half the time, loving. I can understand your being a little wary of my intentions, given my colorful past. Shady is the word that comes to my mind. <laughs> And, of course, the fact that I married your ex-husband. You are so fond of reminding me. But I've always thought that you, of all people, would be big enough to give a person a second chance. Well, I'm big enough. I'm just not sure I'm gullible enough. Renee, the Alexandra you see standing before you is not the woman you once knew. I'm... I've changed, and I am willing to prove that. By getting Ben Price that fellowship. Yes. I've always felt that hard work and talent deserve to be rewarded. And there is not a doctor on this staff that is more dedicated and talented than Ben Price. I think he... Don't you think he deserves that award? <clears throat> well, you'll be happy to hear the patient checked out just fine. Any clue about the uh, memory loss? Memory loss? Vicki, do you know who I am? It was a temporary loss, Alex. Oh, thank God. Well, my guess is that Vicky sustained a mild concussion in her car accident, but I won't know for sure until the test results come back. And when will you find that out? In the morning. But I'm not anticipating anything serious. Oh, darling, we must be so relieved. Mm -hmm. I certainly am. Well, I was never worried in the first place. Vicky, darling, I think we should be going. Yes, good night. Good night. Renee, we haven't finished talking about our project. Honestly, Alex, yes. could we please leave this until the morning? The decision does not have to be made until then anyway, and I have to get Vicky home. Vicky? Where did she go? Vicky? I don't want you to marry Court. That's my kid. It's our kid. Whatever. Look, maybe we ought to get married. Uh, people do that, right? Friends having a baby. Yeah, but you want to marry me? I mean, you're, you're sure you, you really want to marry me? Yeah. I mean, if you... Yeah, okay. Would you marry me?
You know you don't love Todd Manning. I don't have to explain anything to you, Court. You made it very clear that things were over between us. No, no, see, that's what you wanted, all right? I, yeah, I got upset because I thought you were being completely unreasonable. Why? Because I didn't want you running errands for Tina? I wasn't running errands for Tina. I was just going to try to track down David Vickers. What is it going to take to get that through your head? I don't know. Maybe I'm just too stupid. No, you're not. Blair, I love you, and I am not going to let you go. I am sure you're completely shocked to see me, but if you will just let me do the talking, I'm sure I can clear everything up for you. How dare you show your face here? I told you I didn't want to see you again. Tina, just let me explain. Don't waste your breath, liar. Save it for your new lover, Dorian. I've already called the police, Tina. You know, if I were you, I would stop trying to protect Vickers and try to figure out a way to save your own hide. Save my own hide? I'm not protecting him. Last time I checked, harboring a fugitive was against the law. Why would I harbor him? I hate him. You are amazing. You don't even blink anymore when you lie. It comes so naturally to you, doesn't it? I'm not lying. You know, I'm beginning to think that you are better off with low-life scum like Kane Rogan and that piece of garbage over there. Don't say that. Well, it's true, Tina. You know, I am tired of trying to protect you from yourself, all right? You go ahead. You do whatever you want. You want to go off with that jerk? You go ahead and you do it. But I'll be damned if I'm going to let you drink. Sarah, are I kidding? Oh, I am... One Life to Live will continue in a moment here on ABC. from the Keys, and are we really married? Hard to believe. Reality sure sets in fast. Thanks to Tina. There's no place like home. In Landview. You haven't had much time to miss it, have you? What's to miss? Well, I guess you do have a point. But there is a lot to be said about sleeping in your own bed. Yeah, I guess. It's your bed, too, Todd. I guess it's going to take a little while for me to get used to that idea. Boy, got a lot of time. Don't worry. Look, uh, Todd, this is really weird for me, too. I, I don't know what to expect. At least you were married once before. What, to Asa? Doesn't count. We're just gonna have to take it one step at a time. And be patient. No pressure. I guess that sounds like a pretty good plan. So you want to go to bed? But that's your idea of no pressure? I, I, I don't know. I don't think... Well, I'm... Actually, I'm pretty wiped out by my day, too. We both could use a good night's sleep, though. Well, you go ahead. I'm still a little wired. You haven't had much time to yourself lately, huh? Nope. I guess I kind of got used to going out it alone. I'm sorry about that, Todd. Look, it's no big deal. I just need some time to chill out, that's all. Okay. Well... Uh, uh, good night. Good night.
come on, we're going to take a shortcut here through the library. Go out through those veranda doors, and we're going to hit the rest of the property. I'll be right with you. Of course. He's not dead, Tina, but he is gone. Why do you keep acting like this is all my fault? Because you're in on it, Tina. I am not. Oh, yeah, what was that little song and dance you did to distract me long enough to let that jerk get away? I didn't know he was going to jump. I don't have time for this. Wait, wait, wait. I want to know what you meant before about CJ and Sarah. Do you really need me to spell that out for you, Tina? You want me to be scared? Are you scared? Good. It's about time. What do you mean by that? Well, hold on. Wait a minute. Renee, Vicky wasn't at the admissions desk or in the main lobby. But this is not like Vicky to just up and leave like this. Are you really yeah. sure she's all right? Yes, she seemed pretty anxious to get home. <sighs> Maybe we pushed too hard, insisting she come down here tonight. You know, we did the right thing. Trust me. Any injury involving the brain is serious. I'm just so grateful that we ran into you at the club and you were able to see her on such short notice. I'll be in the police. Well, your dedication is much appreciated, Doctor. Anytime. And you seem to have a fan in the new Mrs. Ace of Buchanan. Yeah, I noticed. Any idea why? Well, she's been appointed to the hospital board and she's taking her position very seriously. Oh, really? Yes, her first project seems to be the London Research Fellowship for which you are a candidate. And she seems determined to get you that award. Why me? I mean, there are a lot of really good doctors on that list. Well, she seems to feel you're the most deserving. Not that I don't agree with her. I was planning on casting my vote for you myself. Uh, thanks. But uh, what about Mrs. Buchanan? Should I be worried? Well, there are other people I'd rather have in my corner. Oh, uh, great. Yeah, well, don't worry. Don't worry. I actually think that Alex might have found something to do that couldn't possibly harm anyone. So, will the young doctor be heading to London or not? We'll know in the morning. Well, what are the odds? Definitely in his favor. Oh, good. Good. I can hardly wait for him to get the news. I'm really proud of you, R.J. Gannon. It's been a long time since someone said that to me. Well, you deserve it. <laughs> I think it's very commendable how you... Trying to make peace with Hank by helping Sheila's brother? And my niece Rachel's boyfriend. That's what I mean. It shows that you really care about what's best for everyone in your family. It shows me that people really can change. Mm, I'm not sure Hank will be so quick to believe that. Well, I wish he could see you the way that I'm starting to, that's all. Then he'd see that your family's welfare is very important to you. Well, you got that right. Ben winning this fellowship will be a good thing for everyone. I want to find some way to show my appreciation for what you've done. Well, as long as it's not something that will let my husband go through the group. Well, surely Asa wouldn't object to a little dinner. Oh, so you're inviting him too? He's not the one I want to thank. Then you'll have to find an alternative plan, won't you? Now, don't tell me you, don't, you never miss the good old days, huh? Being a free spirit when you could come and go as you please. Stay out all night if you wanted to without having to answer to anyone. I don't mind answering to these side. Besides, I have different priorities now. None of which include having a good time. If you are trying to lure me back into the life that I so willingly gave up, you are wasting your time. I love being Mrs. Ace of Buchanan, member of the vestry cultural liaison, on the board of the hospital, winner of the charity award. Oh, but I have thought you hadn't won. I will win that award. It's only a matter of time before you start itching for a little more excitement, like the good old days. <laughs> See, I heard all about you and Carlo Hessen. You two, mm, you two are really something. So when those bright lights start calling, give me a ring. Don't hold your breath. I don't think I'll have to. There you are. Alex, why is it every damn time I turn around that hound dog is sniffing around my wife? 
I don't know. I just can't seem to help if it men find me irresistible. Well, there's one man you don't have to help. Take a little advice from your husband. That guy lives for trouble. He gets off on it. Well, what's enough of him? Who cares? I'm all yours. You finish your business with Renee? Yes, I did. You're lucky that's a business to do myself while you're away. Was I worth the wait? Oh, I don't know. I'll let you know when we get home. Oh, good. What's your pleasure? Well, let's see. We've got two cars. What do you say we fire up the hot rods and uh, race home? What are the stakes? The winner takes all. Gee, what does a loser have to do? I think I'll give you a head start. expect anyone still to be up. Well, I uh, was a little bit worried when you didn't, when you weren't here when I came in. Oh, I went for a, a drive. Yeah, I went for, just got in for a walk myself. I couldn't sleep. Is, uh, is something bothering you? I just saw Cassie tonight. You know what, never mind. I know you don't want to hear this. No, 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 it's all right. Tell me what it is. It's just that she still thinks there's something not right about the way Dorian disappeared. Didn't you show her the letter that Dorian sent you? Yeah, that's just it. I mean, why would Dorian send me a letter and nothing for her own daughter? Well, uh, perhaps Dorian is ashamed to admit to Cassie that she fled the country to escape murder charges. You know, that's what I thought at first, too. But Dorian would never let her daughter suffer not knowing where she was. I mean, she would have at least found a way to, to send word that she was all right. Perhaps that's what she meant by writing you a letter. Perhaps. You know what? I think you need a good night's sleep. I think everything will look much clearer in the morning. I must look pretty dumb right now. No. Gracious, no. I just don't like to see you torturing yourself over this. Please. Don't think about this anymore tonight. It's not going to be easy. Good night. Good night, sweetheart. Wonderful. Another loose end that must be tied up.
are you going? Uh, I'm going out. I, I gotta get some air. What? Something wrong? Did I, did I do something? No, no, it's got nothing to do with you. But then wh why are you going? Because I just, I need to breathe, that's all. I just need to breathe. Okay. I'm sorry. I, I fell asleep out here before. Well, that's okay. You're allowed, Todd. Yeah, I know. I had a nightmare. I guess it kind of shook me up. Well, you want to talk about it? No. Look, Todd, I know that this, is, this isn't this is easy for you. Yeah, well, it's no picnic for you either, is it? Todd, we did the right thing for the baby's sake. I hope you're right. Todd, are, are you going to be, be coming back? I mean, how late? <laughs> Look, I'm just going out. I need to get some air. I'm going to go for a walk. Okay. Well, I'm going to, um, I wanted to go over and, and see Cassie and tell her the news. About the baby. Oh, I thought I would tell her about that later, one shock at a time, you know. Right. I want to go over a, about ten. I'd love for you to come. To Andrew and Cassie's. I don't know. I. Well, I, I'm going to be going a, about ten. I don't make it. Thanks. Todd. We're going to make this work. I, I know it. I'm glad one of us does. Where are you, David? He got away. Are you happy now? I want him caught just as much as you do. Hmm. Look, I know you don't believe me after everything I've done, but I swear to you, this time is different. You're right, Tina, this time is different. What do you mean? I hope it was worth it. Worth what? Worth sacrificing everything that you once told me was important to you. If you're talking about CJ and That's Sarah... That's exactly what I'm talking about. Well, I would never do anything to them because of David. You're right. You're not going to. You forced my hand, Tina. I... I don't have any other choice. I'm going to take steps to make sure that there is no possible way that you can ever put our children's lives in jeopardy again. Get up. What time is it? Get up, Dorian. This is about your daughter. What about her? What's happened? Is something wrong? What? Seems that she's convinced that something dreadful has happened to her mother. And I cannot have her voicing her suspicions all over town. You don't dare touch her. Calm down, Dorian. I have absolutely no intention of even going near her. No. <clears throat> you are going to call her. And if you try anything, anything at all, you will be sorry. You will be very, very sorry. Stay tuned for General Hospital, next.
a menace to society. They're going to keep me caged in here like the animal that they believe that I am. Will his death put the past to rest? It's really, truly over. Or will his memory haunt them from the grave? No matter how far you run, I'll always be there. Ryan's Revenge on General Hospital ABC.